Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we are going to be having a ton of fun with some body armor, some antique rifles, an old ballistic bob here. Uh, we're going to be testing out the uh, Spartan Armor Systems Arm Apply. Uh, this is the advanced triple curve plate. It's a level 3 plus rated. Guys, we've done a ton of technical testing on this type of armor before. We've done plenty of armor videos in the past. We know that this armor is likely not going to be defeated by anything we're throwing at it today, but that's not the point. The point of this video is to have some fun, shoot the armor. I mean, this stuff is really tough. We know it stops all different kinds of modern threats. We've tested it time and time again with all different types of things, uh, but we're gonna shoot a couple of antiques against this. This has been a video that's been requested by you guys quite a bit, so we're gonna try to oblige. Uh, we're gonna start out with a Martini Henry. Uh, this is a 480 grain lead solid on 85 grains of black powder, uh, but we're not going to be terribly far away. We're just going to start plugging uh, at this armor with some various firearms you're going to see as we go. We're going to run a matchlock, a Martini Henry, a Snyder, a couple of other odds and ends. We're going to shoot some 10 gauge slugs at this, and then we're going to end today's festivities with the cannon. So that was one request that we got also when we did other body armor tests with the cannon. People wanted to see the body armor attached to ballistics gel torso. So we're gonna make that happen. This is gonna be a ton of fun. I have an idea of what's gonna happen, but you know what? Let's just have fun with this. And uh, we're gonna start by plugging this guy with about five rounds of Martini Henry ammo, see what happens. All right, guys, we're gonna proceed to start out with the Martini Henry here, 480 grain pill on 85 grains of black getting out of there at some pretty wicked speeds. This is a great cartridge, you guys know. I'm a big fan of the Martini Henry. We're gonna go for it. I'm gonna hit it five times. I got five rounds in my pocket. We got a little bit more of this ammo than everything else, so we're gonna hit it a few times, see if we can soften old Roscoe up there. It goes nothing. <laughs> oh man, he's not having a good day. Here we go. I'm trying to keep them all somewhat in the same spot here. Stacking them right in there. It's tearing my carrier up. That's okay. <laughs> well, you couldn't ask for that rifle to stack those rounds in there any better than that. We may have to uh, play around with our carrier. Old Roscoe there, he is not feeling good. Let's go see what happened. All right, guys, we can see that the 480 grain solid out of the Martini Henry definitely gave poor uh, Ballistic Bob here a bad day, okay? We did get some spalling after the third shot, but guys, you gotta remember, this is a humongous piece of lead going down range. So this is something that is definitely gonna be an untypical situation for someone to encounter who's wearing body armor kind of makes me think of the movie Jumanji where the guy's running around with the uh running around with his uh old black powder rifle trying to shoot everybody I mean the thing is about these older rifles like this is they just have some just devastating wounds you know and that's the thing they're just crazy the amount of force that's getting put out on these things I'm just going to cut this open all right, so we can see that all our rounds kind of stacked right in there where we wanted them to. Okay. The plate did delaminate in terms of the anti-spalling coating, but we kind of expected that to occur because guys, that's just a humongous piece of lead going down range, okay? All of our shots landed right where we wanted. Um, you can see that the plate stopped it, no problem. We are running the trauma pad behind here and I'm hoping the slow-mo will reveal a little bit of those mitigations uh, from the trauma pad. That is one of the points of having this trauma pad is to reduce the physical energy that is being absorbed into the target when the plate gets hit. Because see, the plate still has to stop whatever threat is being thrown at it, but the target that is wearing the armor still has to absorb those recoil forces as well. So that's what helps mitigate that issue. So. We're gonna put this back together, probably just gonna let it kinda, kinda hang here. We might flip the carrier around real quick and let's set up and hit it with the uh, Snyder. Let's do it. All right guys, we're gonna step it up to the Snyder. It's a 577 Snyder caliber. This is a Portuguese contract cavalry carbine. Uh, 
basically what this is is a modification to the P-53 infield that was used on the by the South in the Civil War uh, to basically sort of a trapdoor configuration to make it a breech loader and a cartridge contained rifle. So the loading that we're running is basically the same exact thing that would have been used in either Springfield or three band infield musket during the Civil War, but just in a cartridge configuration. We'll be doing a full review on this gun at some point. This is like, uh, I think just over 500 grain Manet uh, projectile. So uh, it's definitely got some, some butt whooping power. I've only got a couple of them, so we're gonna hit old Roscoe uh, twice here, hopefully. Um, hopefully we can hit what we're aiming at here. We're not far away. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Open the hinge, pop her out, invert the rifle, throws it right out, grab the cartridge, place it in the chamber, close the breech, full cock, and you're ready to shoot. Let's hit him again. The force that it smacked that plate. I hope the slow-mo really shows that. I've got to see what happened here. This is looking pretty crazy. Let's have a look. All right, let's see how uh, Ballistic Bob fared to the, the mighty 577 Snyder. It's just an awesome cartridge. And I tell you, when, when that cartridge was, was getting on out there and that rifle design was out there, it was definitely one of those things that was a feared rifle. You can see the wax <laughs> that was used to plug the bases of the projectiles ended up on the... <laughs> so we know exactly where the Snyder's hit because the wax is on there. And you can see the plate pretty much ate everything. No issues there. <laughs> There's wax on the inside of it too. Look at that. Big old chunk of lead fell out of there. So, I mean, guys, this is, this is hardened armor. I mean, this stuff is some awesome stuff. We know nothing's going to get through it because speed is what kills armor. But... What this video is about is the smackdown factor, and that is just crazy to see all that energy released into that plate. So we're gonna hem old uh, Ballistic Bob back up. Of course, nothing made it through, everything's good. This is a clear ballistics uh, torso, by the way. I probably didn't mention that earlier. Um, he's been melted down quite a few times, uh, and we've reused him quite a bit, but he's here to show what happens. So tell you what, we're gonna shoot Ballistic Bob here with a match lock. This is a 72 caliber match lock, big old round ball, hunk of lead flying through the air. And guys, the wounds that these things provide back in the day were devastating. Dragging bone out of the back of the wound. I mean, really, really nasty. So let's pit some uh, modern body armor against one of the oldest firearm designs out there, the match lock. Uh, we're using 100 grains of black powder. So this is a big old stout charge. We're going to give him a very bad day here. Let's, uh, let's go for it. Fire in the hole. <laughs> it never gets old. I love it. Match locks are just great. Our entire field here just full of black powder residue and smoke and oh, I love that smell. It never gets old. Let's have a look. All right guys, we're going to pull it apart. I think it's quite clear we know what happened. I mean, we heard a just devastatingly loud and obnoxious thud come out of this thing. So we know it stopped it. We just want to get an idea of what's going on here. And uh see what we're dealing with all right oh <laughs> oh man all those chunks of lead coming out of there I would I would wow <laughs> you can see where that round ball hit and it's just nuts the little slivers of lead you know those are pure lead round balls so it just hit the plate and just basically disintegrated so nothing overly impressive to report there other than the fact that I mean hey why not hit armor with things like that. Uh, we are going to step it up to a 10 gauge slug. Now this is a modern gun, but we're, we're shooting a slug that weighs 766 grains out of, a, out of a 10 gauge SB2. Since we're throwing big old bowling balls, why don't we do that? And then we're gonna put a fresh plate on there. We're gonna give you a grand finale that you don't wanna miss. So that's pretty cool. Let's step it up. Now Federal, if you're listening, I hope you are, they don't make this slug anymore. Federal, guys, you gotta, you gotta start loading the 10 gauge slug again because this thing is so hard to find. But I'll tell you what, 766 grains of lead doesn't lie. What I like to compare this to is a 50 cal after it's traveled about 1400 yards and it goes down range and it's smacking something because literally the weight of this projectile is right on par with the 50 cal. This is so much butt whooping power in a small package, I love it. 
And Ballistic Bob, I promise, this is gonna hurt me a lot more than it's gonna hurt you. Don't try this at home. This is not going to be fun. You can feel my teeth rattling now. Whoa, yeah! <laughs> Man, you could just hear that concussion. God, it hits it. You know, oh yeah. Now that puts a nice wallop on it, and I'm sure that uh, everything's fine for Ballistic Bob. Let's go have a look, but after that, let's roll out the cannon, literally. I, I think we can throw, uh, we can step that up a notch and let's throw about a little over a pound of lead at it at the same speed. Well, right out the gate with the 10 gauge slug, we can see that the slug wound up right here in front of old Ballistic Bob. And that is, ooh, I cannot imagine. Uh, that is just scary. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering which hole is from the 10 gauge slug. I don't know if you guys can figure it out. Look at that big old nasty hole right there. That's a, that's a bad, that is a bad day. Look at the size of that hole. All right, so we're gonna pull this out here. Now this plate has been shot to heck and back. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put a fresh plate on here for the cannon test. So we can see the anti-spalling, obviously from the martini test. I mean, it's already been separated. Um, this is not really a test of the anti-spalling coating because of, of what we're throwing at it. I mean, if you were to hit this with 12 gauge slugs out of just a modern gun and not an antique gun, you'd still get the same effect of that doing that because it's just so much lead and it has to go somewhere, it has to displace. So as that spalling and that the physical weight and size of the spall that comes off of it, um, you're gonna get that effect. But the trauma plate doing its job, we got a bunch of lead slivers. We could pretty much just throw all this lead back in the casting pot, melt it down and use it again. But I'll tell you what, let's set this whole rig up for the cannon and let's, let's send old Ballistic Bob out with all the honors that he deserves. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna end things off here with the Parrot rifle here, uh, shooting our Spartan armor here. We've got it in a new carrier. We've moved Ballistic Bob down just a little bit to get him kind of lower. And uh, you can see that this cannon certainly doesn't have a hard time putting big holes in things. This is where we test fired it earlier to make sure our point of aim is exactly where we want. So we've got the cannon sighted in. We're hopefully gonna put around right in the middle of Ballistic Bob there. We've got a fresh plate, fresh carrier. Bob's feeling a little hurt there, but life's gonna go on. I tell you what, we're gonna torture up. This is gonna be neat. As far as I know, nobody has ever shot armor on a ballistic gel torso with a cannon. So here we go. All right, I'm getting the heck out of here. What? what what just happened <laughs> the table's standing up now <laughs> all right well boys and girls that's what happens when you mess with a cannon uh you can see that our <laughs> backing board got broke and it flipped the table back up and the armor pretty much sliced uh ballistic bob in half that is pretty crazy we're gonna whoa so there's the piece of spalling that kind of wound up inside of him. <laughs> Look at that. I think we're gonna have to uh, send that out in a man can for one of you or something. So I'll tell you what, uh, I'm gonna pick this torso up. Let's throw him over here on the table and have a closer look. All right guys, I've seen a lot of crazy things in my day when it comes to this kind of stuff, but we surveyed the damage, looked at the slow-mo. Guys, this was absolutely crazy. It's like the strength of the plate and the density of the torso and the way it was rigged up combined with how fast and how heavy that round was, it's like the forces just kind of canceled each other out and everything just imploded. It was nuts. So the carrier here was completely screwed up. And you can see that the, <laughs> the trauma pad is pretty much just turned to shreds. We saw that go everywhere. So the carrier pad pretty much screwed. We were walking around and we found little bits of armor just strewn everywhere. And what you can see, and this is still warm, you can see an indentation with a little bit of grease on it that was left over from that Manet projectile, just like it was out of the Snyder. We noticed we had little grease spots left over from the Snyder. We've got a little bitty grease spot left over from the cannon projectile because it's the same construction as a Snyder projectile. So we got broken pieces of plate everywhere, which are very sharp. I'm gonna be careful with those so I don't cut myself. And what we'll do is, if you guys are interested, I'll put some of these larger pieces in like the man cans. 
and uh, I'll sign them for you guys and everything. So there's what's left of the plate. In fact, there's a uh, big old chunk of plate in here. I'm gonna try not to cut my finger off here. Look at that. <laughs> there's another, I mean, that plate embedded itself in the middle of the torso and you can see part of the dent. We could probably put this thing together like a puzzle piece if we want. And then pieces of armor stuck in there and a giant gaping hole that uh, is really scary and devastating. And we were looking around and we actually found chunks of lead all over the place. And some of these lead chunks actually have like rifling marks on them and everything. So I know that lo a lot of these lead chunks came from the cannon projectile that was left over. So literally that projectile just hit, dumped all of its energy, shredded into a million pieces, destroyed the armor. And poor Ballistic Bob here has earned an early retirement. He's done, he's getting thrown in the trash and that is the end of his torture. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We had a lot of fun making it. Um, we really like to take on some of these odd projects like this. I mean, not many people would test armor with antique rifles. I mean, are people gonna be walking around trying to shoot each other with that kind of stuff these days? Probably not. But just from the prospect of fun, it's just really neat to see what some of these slow, honking, butt whooping cartridges can really do to modern armor. So we can see that all the other threats were stopped no problem, but guys, if a cannon wheels up, you don't wanna be anywhere around it. I mean, that is just a tremendous amount of energy. You wouldn't be walking away from that regardless of the armor you were wearing. Even when we shot the armor with the 50 cal, we found that the 50 cal didn't quite devastate it as badly as this cannon did. So to give you an idea of energy and everything like that, that's a tremendous amount of energy going down range. So, that's awesome. I enjoyed making this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.